Every year now, we have gathered as a people for the past four years to commend the souls of our children unto God. However you may have lost a child, whether through tragedy of an accident or a miscarriage or of any other form, we gather here to offer the poverty of our own suffering the difficulty of this part of our lives unto God. It used to be pre-pandemic that we would walk by bread and wine in the back and bring it up and offer it to our Lord. And in offering it, the mere ordinary substance of bread and wine becomes a means of imparting a divine relationship. And transformed in this altar are the works and sufferings and joys and hopes offered by the people. Just as you hold in your hands the flowers of each of your children, that can never fully express the beauty and the joy that each of your children had been, So, too, you will come up, perhaps once again, perhaps for the first time, up here to the altar to offer them to the Lord, to offer your suffering to the Lord. My soul is deprived of peace, the writer of Lamentations says. But later he also says the mercies of God are renewed each day. We know that in this life there is vast incompleteness, suffering, travail, difficulty. But we also know that the Lord comes into that difficulty. Think of Martha. She meets our Lord at the death of her own brother and honestly jabs her index finger into his chest. Although it doesn't say that in the text, you can almost hear it. If you had been here, this would not have happened. And yet our Lord in his omnipotence does allow difficult things to come to pass. Things that you and I will not know this side of heaven, why they were so. But you have also ventured out in hope. You've had the courage to venture out in hope that your sufferings will be given meaning. That the loss of your little ones will be caught up in the mercy and grace of God, and that there is no circumstance that cannot also know the power of the resurrection if presented to our Lord. You are here to present your children, all your children, living and deceased, to the Lord. I'd invite you to consider for a moment this last line. First, Martha says, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus asks her, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Her response, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. What a funny way of saying things. 
Here she is speaking to God himself, to the Christ himself, to Jesus himself, whom she knows as friend, and who she has come to believe in as Lord, but says, is coming into the world a present progressive. That's to say, I am going to church. I am working. I am an ongoing state. And here she is meeting our Lord, saying, I believe in you who are coming into the world. Well, this in the Gospel of John is still a few chapters away from Christ's own crucifixion, in which his flesh is pierced and his blood drains out from him and seeps into the earth. Christ does not just come into the world to be among us. He comes into the world pouring out his precious blood. A price to be paid to cancel out the debt that all of humanity has inherited. It's been joked that original sin is the only teaching of the church that doesn't require faith. You can see this messed up world anywhere, whether you're Christian or not. And yet Christ coming in the flesh at Christmas, going through, passing through the womb, coming into this world, skinning his knees as a child, being obedient to mother and father in the home. And Mary and Joseph, who accompany us here, also knowing the loss of their son. First prefigured in the loss of the child Jesus in the temple for three days, they not knowing where he was. and the loss of Christ in death. Mary and Joseph know the loss of a child well. At every single Mass, said all around the world, there are more than 400,000 priests in the world, most of whom offer a daily Mass, The church is always remembering the deceased, and may it be so after we ourselves are deceased. Today we will use these words in the Eucharistic prayer. Remember, Lord, your servants, each of our beloved children, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. If your children were baptized, then we have hope that that catches hold. If they had not yet been able to be baptized for whatever reason, you are here now indicating a certain baptism of desire. This offering of your children to God does not change the pain of loss, but invites Christ in to bleed into the very messiness of this painful part of your life. That just as these children have united their deaths with the death of our Lord, so too you might unite your passion, your suffering with the suffering of him who loved us. When from the earth, the prayer continues, he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, 
and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, a line we know well. There, in this kingdom, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we should be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. The ancients have called heaven the beatific vision, the constant seeing of happiness. One of the many reasons why the Lord will need to wipe away the tears from our eyes is because when we see with tears in our eyes, the world is fuzzy. Just as pain and suffering makes our understanding of this human experience fuzzy, unclear, difficult to penetrate the depths. The Lord will wipe away the tears from our eyes so that we can enter into the heaven, into heaven with the clarity, the brilliance, the luster of the resurrection. In another place that we will hear momentarily, the preface, it says, Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. Death doesn't end life for those who are united to Jesus. Death only changes life, we firmly believe. And so whether or not you come here regularly to this church or you're once in an every other while person, you have come here, here and now to offer the Lord your children, to offer the Lord your suffering, your pain, your difficulty, and your faith that death does not end life but merely changes it with some hope that you too will be caught up in the glory of the resurrection with your loved ones. For this, we as Christians Christians observe every Sunday as a day dedicated unto the Lord, lest we too become a people who forget and lose meaning and fall to despair. But instead, we are a people who look upward who look towards the resurrection with confidence and the yearning to meet our loved ones, to come to know Joseph and Mary, to know them personally, and to have them express their knowledge of us while we have been here below. This is the beauty of why we come here, why we gather as a Christian people, why we receive the bread and wine offered here, being transformed, transubstantiated into the broken and bruised and bleeding body and blood of him who loves us, of him who has come into the world to the point of inserting his blood into the depth of soil. Praised be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Let us now stand and offer to the Lord the many petitions of our hearts 